Where were you on October 11th, 2003? That's a question Missouri football fans will be asking of each other for years to come. Hi, I'm Mike Kelly, the voice of the Missouri Tigers. On a magical evening before a sold-out crowd at Faroe Field, Missouri beat 10th-ranked Nebraska 41-24, ending several significant streaks in the process. It was the Tigers' first win over the Cornhuskers since November 18th of 1978, the first victory over Nebraska in Columbia since 1973. The win snapped a 20-game losing streak against ranked opponents, and it also put to bed a 45-game skid against top 10 foes. It was quite a night, one all Tiger fans will remember for a long, long time. Matheny's kick off a low driving squib kick, bounces on the 12, goes off of Davis in the end zone, picks it up at the goal line, running to the 10 to the 15, cuts right side to the 20, breaks a tackle with the 22, plus the 25 to about the 27, brought down by Jason Simpson of Missouri. So good field position on what could have been uh, a break for Missouri early, but Davis made the most of it. Still checking off with three. Slides under center and takes the snap. Option to the short side. Pitch it to Davis as he's hit. Cuts it up. Hit at the 29. Brought out of bounds at the 31 by Jason Simpson. Along with Michael Harden on the stop. Pick up of about a yard, perhaps two, depending on the spot. Again, checking off as he slides under center. In motion, goes Liley to the left side. Deep handoff, Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped at the 48. Tigers with a great surge. Russ Bell was there for Missouri. Also, Xavier Jackson. Yeah, that was just a power play off the left side that time. Missouri defense had a stun on him. They went right in there and had great penetration. And that's the way to stop that play because that fullback is leading. And if that fullback needs somebody on his side of the line of scrimmage, that'll, that'll follow the play up. Teams converting on third down at 49% against Missouri. A third and seven here for Nebraska. They're one of one tonight. Tigers shift defensively. Two receivers to the right, one setback. Play action fake. Pressure comes. Lord flush in the pocket. Has some running room. Bounces outside to the left at the 48 of Missouri. Popped out of bounds. Shy of the first down by A.J. Kincaid. He's going to be about a yard shy, short of the uh, first down as they mark him out at the 46-yard line. So Nebraska sends on Larson, the punter, and that's what they love to do, too. Yeah. They're more than happy to punt the ball and play field position with this great defense. Kyle Larson averaging 42.2 yards per kick this season, his long 71. Marcus James back deep for Missouri, standing on his 10. Larson will let this fly from around the area of his 40-yard line. It's a good snap. Hits it with the right foot. High spiral, wobbling to the left sideline, out of bounds at about the 17-yard line of Missouri. Going to mark it out actually a little further upfield from that at the 24, so the Tigers get a little bit of a break there for Missouri. Is the tight end Cisse. Straight drop, play action fake, fired over the middle. Caught by Coffee at the Nebraska 49, brought down at the 45 by Pat Ricketts. And again against that zone defense, John, there are inherent openings right there in the middle of the scene. That's right, right down the middle that time. There are some openings in that zone, and Baldwin had good protection. Give that offensive line some credit. They did a nice job of protection. And, and where uh, where Brad Smith could locate the receivers, set back there, set his feet, and just fired his ball. Smith, three-step drop, pressured now, running towards the right, throw it back over the middle, and overshoots him, intercepted by Nebraska. Picked off by Bullocks, running the left side to the 40, popped out of bounds at the 43-yard line, the first interception of the season by Brad Smith. He had a man open and just overthrew him. Yeah. Takes the snap, bubble screen, running left side, is the floor left side to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, open running room. He takes it into the end zone, a little bubble screen, and Mark LaFleur took it into the end zone for a Nebraska touchdown. A kick from DeAngelis. Low end over and kick coming up as Roberson takes it at the seven yard line, running the right side of the 15 to the 20. Gets to the right side across the 25 and brought down at about the 26 yard line. And that's where Missouri will take it for the second time tonight. Ira Cooper on the stop for Nebraska. Second and 12 from the 35. Slant pattern to Boga makes the catch at the 42, wrapped up at the 44 yard line. So a little quick hitter off the left side as Bullocks makes the stop for Nebraska. The punter for Missouri out of Centerton, standing on his 30. Takes a low snap, no rush, hits it, 
a high spiral, and he hit this one well. Backing up as Davis takes it, goes off of his shoulder pad at the four. Is it covered? Still loose, covered by the Tigers at the six. Okay, that's what it takes, Mike. Something like that, a big break. That's a tremendous break for Missouri that time. It was a great kick, Mike, by the way, a tremendous kick by Brock Harvey. It looked like James Kinney was the man. He was the man who was able to cover the fumble after it went off the chest of Davis, the punt returner. So the and Tigers have it first and goal from the Nebraska six-yard line. And it was great coverage. There were a lot of black shirts down here to, to retrieve that football. Great coverage. Okay, here's the I wonder thing. why he fielded it, John, that deep. He, no, you, you know what? You should let the, anything inside that 10-yard line, you let it drop. Deep handoff, Abron running right, cuts it up at the five, hit at the four, trying to get to the end zone. Touchdown, Missouri! That was great running. That was terrific running. He had two Nebraska Huskers on him. He took him right into the end zone. Tremendous, powerful running by the tailback, Zach Abron. He drug Barrett Root and Josh Bullocks into the end zone, and Missouri pulls within one with 6.25 to go here in the first quarter. Martini approaches the football, strikes it with the right foot, a short high pooch kick, angling towards the left side of the field, taking and goes off the shoulder, pad up and up, back the ball, it's free on the turf, and the Missouri got it back! The Tigers get it back again, this time at the 29! Nino Williams got it, Mike! Whoa. It was fumbled by Nebraska's up man, Paul Jack O'Hauer in the wide receiver, and Nino Williams recovers, and the Tigers trying to strike quickly again. Well, that went right Right between his arms, right down, right, dribble right down his stomach and right on the, right on the ground. This is a high pooch kick that we saw them working on that's throughout right. the course and, and, of the work week. In the practice, that's right. They don't want that Davis to uh, run that ball back, so they run a high pooch kick and one of the up men take it. And they get better coverage that way, too, because the ball is not going as far. Smith takes the snap, deep handoff for Abron running left side, across the 20, squirts across the man. First down yardage to the 29, brought down by Barrett Rood. Well, that time, that defensive front four slanted to, to the right. Smith from the shotgun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, now running left, has a seam, cuts it inside 45 to the 50, first down as he slides down at the Nebraska 47-yard line. Fabian Washington out of Bradenton, Florida, on the stump for Nebraska but not until Brad Smith moved the Tigers into Nebraska territory. Now they empty the backfield as Abron comes in motion to the right. Bubble screen, throw it out to Outlaw. Outlaw trying to run back. Now it's going to throw it back to Brad Smith. Running room with a wall of blockers in midfield. To the 40, to the 30. Cuts it inside, 25, outside 20. He's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Missouri. Nebraska was completely fooled. Every call of Nebraska people were on the west side. Four blockers and Brad Smith on the east side of the field. Nothing to it. They picked off the one Nebraska defender, and he went in for the touchdown. A great play. Great pass by Outlaw. Great run by Brad Smith. And the rain, too. A little trickery by Mizzou. Chris Gervino. That was a thing of beauty. They had that so perfectly set up. A convoy of blockers for Smith, much like Nebraska had on its touchdown. And you get Brad Smith in some space with some blockers ahead of him. Lights out. Tigers have their first lead tonight. And Missouri has broken on top of 10th-ranked Nebraska with 10.57 to go in the first half. The Tigers lead it 14-7. Tied in tight to the right is Peets. Two receivers to the left. In motion goes Liley back to the right. Deep hand over Horn. Hit at the 12. Spins off a man, but dropped at the 11. Good pursuit by Missouri. The ball was lost, and the Tigers say they have it. The linesman comes in and says they do have it. Turnover, Nebraska. Missouri gets it back. Well, it was great pursuit that time. Four or five, four or five Tigers hit him, and as he came down, that ball came out. It was excellent, excellent pursuit, and that's what defensive hustle will do for you. The more people you get on the ball carrier, the more chance you get the ball. To the right of... Lord, who takes the snap, looking to the left side. Has time, now fires over the middle. Caught by Pilkington at the 19. Wrestled down at the Missouri 13-yard line. Stopping the clock with 21 seconds to go as Jason Simpson makes the stop. Nebraska goes without a huddle. Dykes, the right-footed kicker. 
High snap, good place. Kick is up, and it is good. With two seconds to go in the half, Nebraska cuts Missouri's lead to 14 to 10. Born the set back to the left side from the shotgun. Lord fakes the handoff. He's going to keep it. Hemmed in. Gets all around him on it. Man at the 35 to the 30 to the 25. First down inside the 20. Popped off his feet at the 18-yard line by James Kenny. Greenwald lines up as a wing to the left. Rigsby in the front of the eye. Born the eye back. In motion, Greenwald to the right. Two tight ends on the first and goal option. Pitch it to Horn. Got a blocker in front. Grigsby running left side. He goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. Two tights. Backfield in the eye. Lord option play to the right side. Fakes the pitch. Keeps it. Gets to the 30. To the 25. Bounces outside. 20 to the 15. To the 10. To the 5. He skips into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. High stepping into the end zone. Jamal Lord gives Nebraska a 23-14 lead. Nebraska scored 10 unanswered points to take the lead. High end over end kick. Coming up as it's short as Roberson takes it at the 11, running the right side, hands it off to Akwaraku, coming back to the left, and he's got some running room. Akwaraku to the 25, to the 30, gets to the 35, to the 40. Run out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Brad Akwaraku dropped the ball on Missouri's last possession with a big run there on the reverse. Yeah, we saw him practice that in the, uh, on the practice field, Mike. That's a great reverse that time. They all went for Roberson. Robers handed off to Ekwer Ekwer, and he came right around. And he had a pretty good wall right there for, for his blocking, but they got loose, but uh, he did a nice job of getting a big game. to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday as we get set to start the fourth quarter. Number 10, Nebraska has taken over the lead at 24 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Nebraska this year has only given up seven total points. Along with Charles Davis, Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. Missouri facing third down at about five. Smith keeps it, has got the first down running room. He's got one man to beat. Goodbye, Brad Smith. Given up one touchdown this year in the fourth quarter, and their second happens here tonight with the Missouri Tigers and Brad Smith. That was vintage Brad Smith. Matheny on for the extra point to pull Missouri within three. Mm, got some jumping, a little over action, anxious, and it might be against Nebraska. If you're Missouri, you got your fingers crossed. They're pointing fingers. You did it. No, you did it. Let's listen in to Steve Buzczyk. Give us the word. Offside on the defense. Now Gary Pinkle's squad. The distance to the goal penalty. Harry Pinkle said we've had to compete for 60 minutes, and they've done that so far tonight, Charles. But this is where Nebraska has shined this year as opposed to last year because of their conditioning. They've taken control, even though they just gave this up. Can Nebraska come back? Yeah, had a lot of people wondering right there why Missouri might not go for two when the ball's on the one and a half yeah. because you just need the extra point to get yourself within a field goal. Plenty of time. So left. don't bother with it. Now watch this. Brad Smith comes out, okay? He's a quarterback. But look here. You've got the three receivers. Watch what happens. He audibles to the inside side zone run. Watch how they shift. See how they shifted there? I think they had a quick screen call to the wide side of the field. He audibles to the zone run inside, fakes to the fullback, gets excellent blocking, and then of course, what did Gary Pinkle tell us? When he gets into the secondary, he's lightning. And once again, a lightning bolt was dropped on the Nebraska secondary as Brad Smith goes into the end zone. That was the longest run against this Nebraska defense this year. 39 yards for Smith. Yeah, I really think that was an audible by, by the way that they shifted. That wasn't a shift off of a set play. They shifted and changed their formation configuration. They love to throw the quick screen out there in that situation. Again, Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, has to like what he just saw out of a sophomore all-star quarterback. Now you get the crowd back into it, and even though we've had a lot of rain, it's stopped for the moment. No one has left the stadium. 
talked about a sellout here, and it's been aided by the Nebraska Cornhusker fans who oh, they, turned out in force. A lot of people tell me that a lot of these fans that travel are people who can't get tickets in Lincoln. Right. It's the only way to see their Huskers is possibly to go on the road, and this place is packed. Even the, the Rock M is covered. Now Matheny will pooch kick it again down to about the 23-yard line. Up to the 40-yard line of the 42-yard line is Jack O'Halloran again. Had a fumble earlier tonight. Let's take a look at what Brad Smith, the sophomore from Youngstown, has done tonight. Well, using his legs to get by himself a little more time in the pocket. Now this time, and look at watch him, watch him downfield. Gets a good block downfield. Big play by Brad Smith. And now the zone play, faking it, seeing the hole, and then once he gets an opportunity, turns on the Jets. And we're dead, we're within three now. Take a look. Last year's matchup, pretty close. Not very big in total offense tonight. Look at the two of them. Oh, big time what, numbers. We're having a quarterback battle here. Two great running quarterbacks. Now, David Horn on the carry up over the 45-yard line. Let's take a look at that graphic again, if we can, guys, in the truck, because uh, I think this really tells a whole story just how powerful both men are. And I think what surprises people is the 148 yards passing the right. football for Nebraska tonight. Yeah, and you've talked about what, what a great job they've done with their legs. They've done with their arms tonight, too, but also with their smarts. Brad Smith with the last audible. Jamal Lord taking what the defense gives him, not forcing it downfield. Penalty flag. Nebraska, by the way, only averaging 110 yards passing the football per game this year. That's good for 114th in the NCAA. You know how many teams are in NCAA Division 1A? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, there's Most only three time. teams behind us, right? <laughs> that's correct. We'll do, we'll do it that way. Still second. But that's not all that unusual for Nebraska because no. usually they're in the top five in rushing, I believe, coming into tonight. They were number six in the nation mm -hmm. in rushing. So, <laughs> yeah, they make up for it in other ways. Oh, yeah. And that always, I always get kind of a chuckle when I hear some other commentators talk about, well, you know, Nebraska needs to throw the ball, blah, blah, blah. Hey, they've won national championships running the football. Listen, they, they beat a Penn State team throwing the ball six times this year. Well, Nebraska's showing a little confusion. And they're going to have to call a timeout with 13.57 left to play. Number 10, Nebraska, trying to extend their streak against Missouri. And Missouri, Nebraska has won 24 straight. A little confusion over in Missouri. A little confusion bringing in the plays. Last year, they used to do it with wide receivers, Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska's always brought plays in with wide receivers. Go back to Bob Devaney, Tom Osborne. This year's the first year they've used signals to signal in from the sideline. On third down, Lord runs away to the short side of the field, and he is going to be dropped at the 43-yard line. Brian Smith, the redshirt freshman. We've mentioned his name a few times, and finally he gives us the highlight we've been looking for. He chases Jamal Lord from the backside. Look to the left of your screen. See him right there. Brandon Barnes, number 21, also in excellent position. Bring up another third and long. Look for Matt Eberflew, the defensive coordinator from Missouri, to turn Brian Smith loose again, going after Jamal Lord. But they must be conscious of Lord scrambling at, up the middle of the pocket. Third and 11. Lord fakes the pitch. He is in big trouble. The ball is out. The ball is loose. Missouri has it. And they're knocking on the door. James Kinney forced the fumble. Watch number 24, James Kinney. We mentioned earlier in the ball game that he's one of their leading tacklers, but they haven't gotten the big plays from him. Hadn't forced fumbles, hadn't made an interception. Well, tonight, he's recovered a fumble, and he's forced two fumbles. James Kinney has come to play in this ball game against Nebraska. And Diedrich Harrington, the redshirt freshman out of Mexico, Missouri, is the one who came up with it, and they're inside the 10. Four fumbles for Nebraska tonight, and they've lost all four. First play, left side. The black shirts are there. 
Zach Abram, nothing doing. Kenny has played a whale of a ball game, though, for that Missouri defense. He's been one of their most productive players over the last three years, but they weren't getting the, the, the difference-making plays out of him, where balls were knocked loose, things that would turn the ball over to their offense. Well, he's answered the call tonight in a big way. Second and goal. Second down and goal. Shotgun. Here comes Nebraska. Smith tries to go right up the middle, and he is dropped. He'll lose about a yard on the play. Smith. Last time Missouri beat Nebraska here in Columbia, 1973, believe it or not. Nebraska was the number two team in the country. In fact, it was October 13th, 1973. 11 straight losses to the Huskers. And that was Dr. Tom Osborne's first season as the head That's coach right. of Nebraska. Third and goal. Third down and goal. You know Missouri's thinking touchdown here. They don't want to just tie the game up. Smith, plenty of time. Trying to get away. Here come the black shirts, and Smith is going to run backwards, throws it over his head. And it'll bring up a fourth down. Demorio Williams is the one who was all over him from the get-go. Steve Juszczyk is going to talk to us about this. The ball will be placed here, fourth down. Forward progress stop. Demorio Williams just emerged on that play, didn't he? The speed of number seven oh, coming my. from out of the picture into the picture and forcing that play by Brad Smith. And now Missouri going for the tying tying field goal. Well, they said forward progress was stopped. He lost five on the play, so now they're going to attempt the field goal. The market at the 22. It's a 32-yarder from Michael Matheny. Riccio will hold the fame. Riccio looking in the end zone, has a man. Touchdown, Missouri! Victor Cisse! year's game between Oklahoma and Missouri. The Sooners did it to the Tigers. That was exactly right. Last year, Oklahoma was on the ropes here against Missouri, and Bob Stoops pulled out the fake field goal through the touchdown pass, and Oklahoma goes on to win. Gary Pinkle said, he, what did he tell Craig Sager at the half? We're going to win this game. We're trying to win it. That's aggressive play calling right there. And the extra point is good. Gary Pinkle trying to stop a losing skid to Nebraska. They have the lead. This will be a 32-yarder from the right hash by the right-footed soccer-style kicker. Good snap, good place. Kick is faked. Fake Riccio throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Cisse! Touchdown, Missouri! Cisse, Cisse, boom, Cisse. Sonny Riccio, baby. I'll tell you what, he got that ball, and look, Matheny made the, made the kick. Sonny Riccio rolled out to his right, and he hits Cissé right at the end zone, according to the end zone. 28-24, Ole Mizzou, here before a sold-out house at Memorial Stadium in Faroe Field in Columbia. The Missouri Tigers have just taken the lead against Nebraska. Watch number 19, the holder, Santino Sonny Riccio. He's the backup quarterback and also had tryouts in Major League Baseball with the Marlins and the Cardinals. What a perfect pass to Victor Cisse, their starting tight end, because he was well covered on the play by number two, T.J. Hollowell. They weren't totally fooled by the fake. It took a perfect pass over the top. And Gary Pickles got to make that one work. Honey Riccio out of Elwood City, Pennsylvania, Lincoln High School. His first touchdown pass in a Missouri uniform. Matheny kicks it out of the end zone in Nebraska. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line. We've talked about the losing streak. 
24 straight. How about the current active losing streaks? Notre Dame over Navy. Nebraska has won 34 straight over Kansas. This is number three in the country. Now the Huskers, plenty of time, no time to panic. 11-21 to play in a game. Lawrence, great drop, throws it into the flat. Pass is dropped by Steve Crewall, the fullback. Now let's see where that summer conditioning comes in for Nebraska. They've been able to pound on people in the fourth quarter so far this year. And what was that great song I get by with a little help from my friends? Nebraska just helped Missouri. Easy play there for Steve Prewall because he definitely would have had five, seven yards minimum on the pass play. Jamal Lord hit him. Right. And now they open the door for him for a second and long. Three wide receivers to the right. trying to hear the play on the lower portion of your screen. Lord, the quick pitch. It's on the ground. Davis has to fall on it. Back to the five-yard line. Five fumbles for Nebraska. They've lost four. And look who forces the play. The pass rush guy, Brian Smith. Watch him coming. Boom! He forced it so fast that Jamal Ward really didn't have time to make a good pitch before he hit him right up to right up in the top of the number. And the Nebraska fortunate to get on the fumble. And now comes up third and forever. Loss of 14. Missouri now in defense. I zone blitz. I don't want to give up a huge play. I want pressure, but I still want to cover the receivers downfield. And it is loud. Freewall tries to break a couple of tackles, able to get up to the 10 yard line, well short of the first down. Brandon Barnes with his second tackle of the night. And Nebraska will be forced to kick it away on fourth down, and it's about 20 to go. What a job by this Missouri defense tonight. See, and that's, that's what coaches always talk about. When you play in Nebraska, and you put them in long yardage situations, obviously they give you your best chance because they don't have the sophisticated passing game to take those kind of shots downfield. And Frank Solis looked up at the clock, still almost 10 minutes to go. Going to put it on his black shirt defense as they try and punt it away. Kyle Larson in his end zone. Kicking against the win, and it's a low kick. Marcus James from the 50. Looks for the wall. Slips still on his feet. In the 40, down to the 35-yard line. 17 yards on the return, and Missouri with the lead and excellent field position. We'll be back to Columbia in a moment. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. The Missouri offense tonight, 379 yards against this black shirt defense of Nebraska. The most the Huskers have given up this year was 319 to Southern Miss. Gary Pinkle's squad has done everything they had hoped for. They've won the turnover battle, they've come up with big plays, and they've attacked on defense. Let's see if Dave Christensen, the offense coordinator, is feeling frisky in this situation wants to punch it downfield. I think he's going to want to waste some time. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Abram left side. May have gotten up to the 35 before Lakeven Smith came up with a stop. There were some big plays in this fourth quarter. Of course, the guy wearing 16 in the black jersey figures to be a big part of those big plays, but the defense has stepped up. James Kinney forcing the fumble. And then the fake. Great call by Gary Pinkle. He told us, we're trying to win a football game. He didn't go right. for the tie there. He went for the win. He's going to keep it on the ground, nearing the 30-yard line. Memorial Williams with another tackle. You know, one of the things Missouri did this week is they tried to uh, uh, sort of go along with the speed of Demorio Williams. They had somebody sort of be the scout as Demorio Williams because he has such great speed and nobody's been able to block him this year. Yeah, and the, the guys that they used were defensive backs who were going to be short, smaller and faster coming off the edge. So their offensive tackles had to really get out there and try and block them, trying to simulate the speed that Demorio Williams provides on the field for Nebraska. Well, Demorio Williams, an incredible story out of Beckville, Texas. Worked on an oil field for a while before going back to football after sitting out a year. I was a Buckus Award candidate. 
Smith looking over the middle, caught inside the 15 down to the 13 yard line. Sean Coffey. What? what a catch! <laughs> you and I on it together. That's exactly what I was about to say. Sean Coffey, hello and welcome back to the land of the living. How could they not find this guy as a receiver in two ball games this year? It's a great question, isn't it? 6'5, yeah. 224, a terrific target, and what a great catch. A hands catcher. You often hear about guys being body catchers. He's a body catcher. He can't make that one. That's Uses right. his hands, brings it down to him. Third reception for Coffey tonight. Smith looking for all of it. Has a man overthrown, incomplete. Smith thought he had him. Ombogo is right there. Very close, but good defense on the play by, by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They had run him off. See the motion? This is Umboga running back across the middle of the field. Watch the defensive back coming there. Sean Coffey was covered. It looked like Pat Ricketts, number 28, came off of the coverage of Sean Coffey and came back and went through Thompson Umboga to cause the incompletion. Second down and 10. Missouri can get a first down without scoring. six-yard line. Zach Abram, the senior out of Lake St. Louis, Missouri. Fans, for exclusive news and recruiting coverage of your favorite teams, log on now to Rivals.com. You know, we talk about Zach Abram, how he quietly goes about his business. How about 15 carries tonight for a very quiet 70 yards and a touchdown? And, and, and again, the Kansas game, he carried the ball a bunch in the first half, barely carried it in the second half. They were saying, why not give it to him a little bit more? You wonder here if Gary Pinkle might be thinking four down territory to try and really get a lead against Nebraska. This keeps it first down Missouri. First and goal, it'll be at about the two and a half yard line. Now he doesn't have to think about that. You know, right. Now he's back into first and goal with Brad Smith coming down the line. You see TJ Hollowell number two, he has the first shot. Brad Smith slips him, falls inside for the first down. And again, I'm gonna go back to this. They're up four, okay? A field goal obviously gives them a touchdown yep. advantage. But if you're Gary Pinkle, you might think about going four down territory and try and get a big lead, a commanding lead, as you go down with 6.49 on the clock. Missouri already 14 points in this fourth quarter. First and goal. Straight over the top, nothing doing. Stopped at about the one. You can hear the pads popping on Zach Abert from up here. Patrick Cabongo coming up to make the stop. The senior out of Montreal, Quebec. Yeah, Patrick Cabongo delivered an El Cabong on that one. Let's take a look at the closest to us, Dave Christensen, an offensive line coach and offensive coordinator. I think he's called a heck of a game tonight. I think so, too. And David Yost to his right, the quarterback's coach, helping out on Brad Smith. Smith has had a whale of a ball game. And we'll see about Missouri's offensive line here. This is where they can really make a reputation. Smith has rushed for 100 and passed for over 100. Second and goal. Smith keeps it. It's a race to the corner. He looks. Touchdown, Missouri! minutes and 53 seconds separates Missouri from 24 years of frustration. Watch number 31, Jarrell Pippins, is in perfect position. He did a great job being a BCR player. Boot, cut back, reverse, stayed in excellent position. But Brad Smith won the one-on-one -on -one battle as a great athlete with the old-fashioned stiff arm. Oh, my, and the extra point is tipped no good. The snap was high. Riccio just couldn't get it down and plan time for Matheny to get a good piece of it. But Brad Smith with the touchdown. And Missouri has taken a 10-point advantage over Nebraska. Coming into this ball game, Nebraska had only given up seven second-half points. Tonight, 20 to Missouri here in quarter number four. And the Tigers have the lead, 34-24. 30 years ago here in Columbia was the last time 
Missouri beat Nebraska here in Missouri. 1978, they beat him in Nebraska. That's part of the team being honored tonight, wasn't it? That's Warren right. Powers. Powers. And on that team, Phil Bradley was the all Big 8 quarterback. Kellen Winslow, James Wilder, running back. Quite a squad. With the win, Davis, five yards deep, he's going to bring it out. Up to the 20, still running room. Davis still running room. Over the 40, up to the 43-yard line. College football on TBS brought to you by Kia Motors. Seven cars, one belief. Kia make every mile count. The United States Army, an army of one. PlayStation 2. And the Home Depot. Go from wondering how to knowing how at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. 545 to play in a ball game. Nebraska with the football. Excellent field position. Screen. Lord looking for it. Being chased. Back to his 30. It's closing with a bunch of black shirts, and he is going to run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. A loss of about 13. Craig Sager, that Missouri defense is playing up to the task tonight. I have a little trouble with uh, Craig's audio. We'll get back to him in a second because what he's going to show you is pretty good. Yeah. The rain, though, has been so hard tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if he short-circuited it out. It stopped for this moment. And, and, and the Missouri defense showing signs of not playing tight. You know, they're not playing to protect that That's lead right. right now, not sitting back on their heels. Went after Nebraska real well on first down. Three wide receivers to the right. Five and a half to play. Lord, looking, throw it over the middle. Intercepted at the 46-yard line. To the 10, Michael Harden. Zach Ville with the interception. Zone blitz, zone blitz. This guy right here, that's Zach Bill. You know what position he plays? Defensive end. And look at how far he dropped in the pass coverage to make the interception to give Missouri an opportunity to really start to believe that they can beat Nebraska for the first time since 1978. I think I was surprised that Bill was so no! far back up here. It had to be something in the secondary. Well, when you take a look at Zach Bill, I mean, 6'2", 272. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Obviously a tremendous athlete to get that much of a pass drop. And, and Jamal Lord trying to tuck a pass in on a crossing route, and Bill made a great play. Now Smith's going to call a timeout. 5.24 to play in the ballgame. Missouri by 10. Nebraska plagued by turnovers tonight. They've lost four fumbles. They've had an interception. 1978 in Lincoln, Nebraska, November 18th to be exact. James Wilder scored four touchdowns. Missouri upset second-ranked Nebraska 35-31. Kellen Winslow, the great Kellen Winslow, helped out. Of course, Missouri went out of play in the Liberty Bowl, and it was the last time Missouri beat the Huskers. And, and, forced, and, and didn't they force, there's Kellen Winslow, the Hall of Famer, number 83 here at Missouri, number 80 with the Chargers, San Diego Chargers. Nebraska had beaten Oklahoma that year it, it, during the middle of the season. And then at the end of the season, when Missouri beat Nebraska, Nebraska still won the Big 8, but they ended up in an Orange Bowl rematch That's with right. Oklahoma, which they did not want, and Oklahoma won the rematch. Cullen's kid's not too bad. <laughs> he got a little bit of game to him. He's got some game. Uh, not his, as much as dad. What's his nickname? The Chosen One? That's yeah. his own self-appointed nickname. Uh, you, know, you know, you're not really crazy about a young guy going with the Chosen One. Yeah. I have a hard time arguing with him the way he's playing right now. I watched him today in the game, and he was on the punt coverage team. He does it He all. went in on punt block for, for Miami also. A true athlete. Here's the situation. 5.24 to play in the game. Missouri leads it by 10. First and goal for the Tigers. Nebraska swarming 
defense. Loss of about two on the play. Now let's take a look at tonight's T-Mobile play of the game, and no question about it, it was the fake field goal. Gary Pinkle, big salute to you for making this call. You know, win or lose on that call, Gary Pinkle sent a message to his ball club, we're out to win this ball game. I'm not satisfied with tying it and hoping things go well later. And Big Mo, I said Big Mo is definitely on the side. I'd say so. Of the guys wearing the black shirts tonight. Second down and goal from the nine. Smith on the draw, keeps it inside the five, touchdown Missouri! Watch Brad Smith, you know, Lombardi talked about a seal here and a seal here. We're going to run the play right through the alley. Look at that. Coming right at you. Boy, following his big guys. Getting a block downfield from Thompson Umboga, number 87. A definite call, quarterback draw. And Brad Smith ran that play with a purpose. Great blocking, too. Feeney missed the last extra point. Gets this one. Smith, three touchdowns tonight. Had three coming into this game for the season. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. They're on Ohio State venturing on the road for the first time this season, taking their 5-0 record with them. But Wisconsin getting this touchdown out of Booker Stanley for a 7-0 Badger lead. That's the way it stands late in the second. Back to you, Ron. Three rushing, one receiving touchdown for Smith tonight. 24 points he accounted for, not too bad. Not bad. And tell Ernie I can I can sing on Wisconsin. And you take go. a look <laughs> at all these numbers for tonight. You know, David Horns had a good night for Nebraska running the football, but right now they're going to have to throw it. But Brad Smith, he has been the big story. We talked about him at the top. Look at the numbers he's put up in this ball game. And the big number of the night, turnovers. Nebraska, five of them. And then the points off of it, Missouri, 21 of them. There's the tail of the tape. Now we were talking to Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator of Missouri. One of his keys, takeaways. Absolutely, positively had to have them. They said they hang their head on speed to the ball, vision and break, and takeaways. And they work at punching the ball out. Yeah, they work at that all the time, and they even have it to the point of, you know, anyone carrying a football in practice is fair game. Yep. Yeah, and if you punch it out, that person has to drop and give them some push-ups. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Davis up over the 30 to the 34-yard line. Good field position. You know, Craig Sager, we've been talking about that Missouri defense, and they get points for what they do. Yes, they do. The score is 41-24, but the points are adding up on their defensive production chart. The last three series alone, James Kinney gets five points for causing a fumble. Diedrich Harrington, five for recovering a fumble. The next series, Brian Smith, he gets three for quarterback hit, five for causing a fumble, and then Zach Bill, seven for the interception. They play with passion, and they're also accountable. Good stuff, Craig. Penalty flag, not going anywhere. As the clock nears five minutes to play in this ballgame. They've already made the announcement here. Do not run on the field. You'll be arrested. But we can see people leaving the hill on the left side. They're already getting ready to hit the field. Offense. Five yard penalty. <laughs> Security. 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 68,349. <laughs> there we go. I'm afraid he's a little outnumbered. I don't know how to break this to him. <laughs> yeah, really. But that, but, but that walkie-talkie, not going to cut gonna be it. any help. He's going to need, he's going to need some reinforcements for this one. You need Iowa State goalposts that can't come down. Lord's pass up in the air, incomplete, almost intercepted again. Davis had it in his hands and bobbled it. You know, going back to what Craig showed us with the production board, as Missouri almost gets another turnover and more production board points, Josh Davis unable to handle it, almost knocks it up in the air. See Kenny with a big hit, cause the incompletion. The production board, is, as Craig said, makes them accountable, shows their production on defense. On offense, they have the same thing, but the offensive coaches told the guys, don't worry about your grades this week, just go play. They were worried too much about it, worried about too many minuses on their grade sheet. They throw it out of the flat, and Missouri's defense is there again. Mark LaFleur, the receiver, but he is swarmed. Check out what's coming to TBS. By one client all the way. Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money! Jerry Maguire. 
Sunday, 8 Eastern on TBS Superstation. <laughs> right now, Missouri showing Nebraska the victory with just 4.28 to play in a ball game. Do you know the human head weighs eight pounds, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Missed that one. You know only dogs and bees smell fear? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. First half, Nebraska 5 of 9 on third down. 1 of 6 tonight in the second half. Lord sets up the screen. Davis, nowhere to go! Another tremendous play by James Tinney. Kenny's one of the co-captains of the team, and we talked with Gary Pinkle about leadership, and, is, and he, as most coaches will tell you, your best leaders need to be your best players because it's hard to lead if you're not on the field making plays. He's asked for more leadership from James Kenny, but he also asked for more production, and obviously tonight he has gotten that from number 24. Kyle Larson standing back at his 12-yard line, 325 to play. Nice driving kick into the wind. Marcus James hit at the 25, still on his feet, looking for some room. Gets up to about the 37-yard line. 45 yards on the kick, nine on the return. A.J. Ricker yesterday told us he had a feeling about this game. I got a, a weird feeling about this year, uh, you know, more than I had in the past. Uh, you know, they're going to come in here. I mean, they're a great team. They've, they've played some good teams so, so far. And it seems like we always play Nebraska pretty well. You know, I can even go back to before I was even here in the kick when they won that game. Uh, you look back, Nebraska normally plays, uh, you know, Missouri pretty tough. And I, don't know, I just got a special feeling about this game this year. AJ, you're as good as our Saturday Swami, Craig Sager, in the cards. <laughs> Craig reading cards and tea leaves. AJ doing it with production. Straight ahead running, clock closing in on three minutes to play Zach Abram. You know, Gary Pinkle, when he took over, he talked about getting respect for this program. Four and seven, then five and seven. Could have gone to a bowl last year, except they got blown out by Kansas State. But the only way you get respect is by winning football games. Gary Pinkle will get respect tonight if this lead, and it should, hold up. Well, they'll go to five and one. Many people had kind of given up hope when they went to Kansas and lost and gave them their first loss of the year because everyone expected them to be five and oh when they played Nebraska after they beat Illinois in the first game mm -hmm. of the season because they thought the schedule set up for it. Now they started to all the gloom and doom kicked in, but look at this. Missouri has pulled the people back into their camp. Smith dumps it up to the 50 to Cisse, still on his feet, down to the 40-yard line. First down, Missouri. Craig Sager, what are they doing on the sidelines to get ready for this celebration? It's not just the sidelines, Ron, but also over in the end zone where I am and where our camera's on top of the goalpost. They are literally going to lower the goalpost before the fans run on the field. Bob Stanley, the assistant athletic director for administration and facilities, called Donnie Duncan for the Big 12, got permission to lower the goalposts as soon as the game is over so that the kids won't time on the goalpost and get hurt. So they got a machine standing by right here. As soon as that gun goes off, the goalpost will come down. Now we already had one injury in college football well because of the goalpost going down. You can't take any chances. Good call by the Big 12 and our good buddy Donnie Duncan. Left side, Abram running room. Inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Just a reminder to stick around for the Chick Quattro postgame report. Ernie and Brian Bosworth will catch you up on all of today's action, including Oklahoma, Texas, Miami, Florida State, that Ohio State-Wisconsin game, and of course our game all coming up. We have 153. Hey, did, you see, did you see our guys going to get the camera off of the yeah. goalpost? That came, that came down. That was worthy of a NASCAR pit stop. That's right. The amount of time he went up there and, you know, with the NASCAR on TNT, I mean, zoom, zoom, boom, that thing was down. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. 45 straight losses to top 10 teams for Missouri. Uh, they're going to keep it on the ground of the 30-yard line. Clock at 125. Stuart Bradley on the stop. Tough night for Nebraska. You see, you see young Daniel Bullock's number 14. With Bernard Thomas, number five on the sideline. 
And, and, and can you imagine the outpouring of emotion? Gary Finkel has told us, right? I'm only concerned about the last few years here because that's all I've been here with, with, with Missouri for playing Nebraska. I'm not concerned about the years in the past. You know something? I don't believe it. That's, that's right. what you tell your team. That's fine. But you, but the alumni have told you it's time to beat Nebraska. All the old guard, everyone around campus. This is the opportunity for, as you said, Missouri to make a statement and announce to the Big 12 that they are a player in the in the conference yet again. Gary Pinkle and his staff have arrived. The first major Big 12 win for him. Only had one losing season while head coach at Toledo. And just think, they may be going bowling this year. Final 17 seconds. They have to snap it one more time, and the losing streak to Nebraska will be over. Congratulations, Missouri Tigers. What a great game by Brad Smith of Missouri. Fabulous game by their defense. Let's watch. Standing by with the man of the hour, Brad Smith. Craig. Well, oh, Brad, first of all, how can you explain this victory when it's been so many years? You obviously had a chance. They took the lead on you. What changed? What turned the game around? Uh, we just was going to do what we've been doing. I play football. We knew it was going to be hard for our battle. And we knew it was going to be one in the fourth quarter, so we just had to out-compete Nebraska. And I think we did that today. In the second quarter, just before halftime, your coach was criticized for not running out the clock. But he told me before we were in the locker room, you can't play it safe. We're going all out. No. How much confidence did he give you? A lot. I mean, our game plan was to attack the whole game. And, I mean, you can't let up in situations like that. He just sent a message to me and the rest of the guys that we can just let it loose and have fun. You came to Missouri, one of the key players, to try to turn this program around. What does this do for this program? This is huge. I, I mean, I, don't, I can't think about how big it is right now, but I'm sure in the future we'll find out. But it's, it's, it's the beginning of something big. I know I saw a lot of your fans here, including your mother. What are you going to tell her when you see her? I love her. I mean, thank her for praying. Thank everybody for praying. I mean, God God did it for us, and I'm just grateful. Thank God. All right, I think Ryan was in the cards. Missouri wins. Missouri wins. Absolutely. Charles, final thoughts. Well, we always hear about Brian Bailey, the strength coach from Nebraska, and their great conditioning. How about a hand for Jeff Fish, the strength coach from Missouri? He had them ready to go in the second half and fourth quarter tonight. Absolutely. Nebraska, number 10 of the country, loses 41. 24. Our next telecast will be next Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern. Oregon State against Washington Huskies. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and the rest of the crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Columbia. Now it's time for the Chicago Post Game.